It is all about him and what he has done in my life from the get-go to be right here, right now. It is an awesome miracle. It's a miracle of his mercy. It's a miracle of his grace. He has taken my life and totally changed it. And I can't even believe it. I can't tell you. And I, well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you all about it. But before I do, what I like to do, what I always do, and I know he's here. I mean, I can feel him, can't you? The Holy Spirit is here. There's no doubt about it. He's always here. When we call on him, it doesn't matter what state our hearts are in. It doesn't no matter what mess we've made in our lives. But when we call on the Holy Spirit, when we invoke his name, he comes. Always. Doesn't matter how far lost we are, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I was lost. And now I'm found. And I'm found and I'm here. So before we do, I'm gonna, we're going to invoke the Holy Spirit, but we're going to do it together. Okay, because this is your personal invitation to the Holy Spirit right now, today, in a special way that he is going to speak to you. It's going to be his words that are going to penetrate your heart, not me, not just a middle-aged lady standing up here talking. It's going to be the Holy Spirit that is going to touch you and speak to you and penetrate you, just like he kind of did over here while I was hiding under the table here. Okay. So you're going to repeat after me three times, come Holy Spirit. Come now. Come as you wish. Come Holy Spirit. Come now. Come as you wish. Come Holy Spirit. Come now. Come as you wish. And he is. He's here, and he is going to help you hear the words that I say the way that you need to hear them. And he's going to help me say the words the way that I need to say them. Okay? So it's all covered. It's all covered. I don't have to worry anymore. No more anxiety. No more anxiousness. Because let me tell you something. I am a very, I was a very anxious, nervous, scared person. I was completely petrified of, of, of everything. And people don't believe that when they meet me now. And that's what we're going to talk about today because today's February 20th. And four years ago on February 20th, I was in the deepest, darkest hole that I could ever imagine. It was a desert beyond desert. I had... I had no idea if it was ever going to end. Nobody did. Nobody knew if they were going to be able to bring me back from that place. And so my testimony is about how I got there in the first place and how I got here from there. And I want to share with you a couple of things. First of all, it's a picture. It's a picture that kind of describes my life. I bring it with me quite a lot. A lot of times when I'm talking with youth, I talk with youth quite a bit. I love to shock their socks off. I just love it. I love it when I've got all these, you know, 14, 15, 16-year-olds just looking at me like this. <laughs> Actually, it's the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a picture that depicts my life. It might depict yours, too. It's about the lost sheep, okay? It's about Jesus right here. As you can see, he is bending over a cliff that his little lamb has fallen fallen off of, okay, with the Holy Spirit hovering there always, never leaves us, always kind of up there watching things. I believe that that bird is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is straining for dear life to grab this lamb who is just totally almost gone. And that is a really good picture. This one, I saw this, it gripped my heart. I had to have it, and now I bring it with me. And I want to share one other thing before I get started, starting at the beginning, which is a good place to begin. Um, it's, it's my life verse. Do, do you, does that, have any of you claimed a life scripture? Has anybody done that? Can you raise your hand? Who's done that? The Lord, I think, the, I think that, um, you know, it, for some people it might change over time, but this is a scripture that totally depicts um, 
what it means, what, what, what my life verse is. And there are some people in the audience who this is going to really blow you away because they, they prayed for me uh, last night before uh, I came, you know, before, after some stuff, and they prayed for me, and one woman got a vision. And she said, I see you singing. Are you singing in the choir? She said, I said, well, I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll hear what, that, what that's about before. And then we went to church this morning. We went to church, and it was from Isaiah. And it was almost identical to my life verse. And I was like, yeah, we're here. I'm supposed to be here. And so are you. It's not, you know, uh, it's not by chance that you're here. It's by call. Because the, the Lord has brought you here. The Holy Spirit has brought you here today. My life verse, Isaiah 51. I adopted it. It was a, I, to me. It says, listen to me, you who pursue justice and seek the Lord. Yes, the Lord shall comfort you. And have pity on all your ruins. Your deserts he shall make like Eden. Your wasteland like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found in you. Thanksgiving and the sound of song. That's me. That's what God did for me. That's what my life is about, and that's what he does for each one of us if we let him, if we get out of his way. He can do that. Now, some of us have, every, all of us have a story to tell. All of us have a dramatic story of God's love, okay? And um, here's mine, all right? My parents um, were what they call today, what they refer to as adult children of alcoholics, Okay? They didn't have that term back then. They just came from very um, chaotic and abusive homes. Both my parents did. And they got together when they, my mother was 14 years old. And they've been ever together all ever since until two years ago when my dad passed away. And they were really good people, but they didn't have the knowledge that we have now about how to get out of the grips of what that does, what the damage does. And they both were pretty damaged by their home lives. And they got married, and they wanted to have a child so badly. And uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen for a really long time. So they had a lot of chance to anticipate what this was going to be like, to have a child. And... Uh, I was the lucky one to be born seven years into their marriage. And uh, I am their only child. They didn't have any others. And, um, you know, we're, we're all bo we're born into an imperfect world. And uh, um, people are imperfect. Parents are imperfect. We know that. So it wasn't a great childhood. They didn't have the tools that we have today. For me, it was kind of lonely and scary. Remember when I said that I'm, I was a very scary, scared person, and um, I think I was, you know, worried before. My mother always called me, "Don't you're such a worry wart, Anne." She'd say, "You're a worry wart," and I would worry. I would worry about everything. In fact, I think I worried on my way out of the womb. You know, like, <laughs> how do I get out of here? <laughs> Which way do I go? I mean, that's it was intense worry. You know, it was intense worry because if you know anything about generational stuff, you know it probably kind of came in through my genes and came down through the generations. The fear and the anxiety and the abuse and the neglect and the stuff like that. I'm probably not alone standing up here telling you about that. 